Okay, where in the income statement are you focused? Are you focused on nominal GDP and the spirit of revenue growth? Or do you go down the income statement to cost cutting and maybe sustained and better margins? Which is it? So, Tom, I think there's a ton of stuff to be watching during earnings season. I say first and foremost, really <laughs> focus on the top line. We want to see which companies are continuing to grow their revenues this far into the cycle. I think that's critical. Um, I'm also watching closely how much of, you know, you know, a slightly higher input cost and perhaps some of the percolating inflation is flowing through uh, in margins, if at all. And if companies are giving guidance that they're expecting that to have an impact over, say, the next few quarters or years. And then I think the probably the most important thing I'm watching in, in earnings season, I think this is true of a lot of investors, is the guidance companies are giving us, not just about next quarter, but yeah. over their expectations <clears throat> for the next 18 months. Well, let me have you become a Fed expert here and do the, do the work mm. of others at BlackRock looking at our central bank policy. If rates come up, does that impinge on corporations? Or as James Dimon says, is that a signal of a buoyant and good American economy? Which is it? I would suggest that companies are not as sensitive to rising interest rates as they have been historically because of how they've structured their debt. You know, if we're talking two or three years from now when the Fed has continuously hiked every quarter, you know, for the next, say, eight quarters, then there are going to be more companies that will need to refinance and then we'll have to take on higher interest costs. But as things stand, especially the large and mega cap camp companies are not going to be that sensitive. The big question is what happens to the consumer. And I would also suggest what happens to small and medium sized companies who are coming to the market much more often for debt. Given the, uh, you know, shifting landscape monetary policy, how do you choose the right equities? Yeah, so I would say this, uh, even though the Fed is continuing to raise rates and normalize policy, we very much believe that there's plentiful liquidity still in the world and that many central banks, especially in the emerging world, are in a um, position where they can either cut rates or will continue to be accommodative. You know, it's not our view that the ECB or BOJ is going to change their tone tomorrow. And so against that backdrop and what looks to be pretty strong growth and uh, sustained and broad growth, we feel good about the opportunities for equities and for earnings.